Hi everyone, I'm Hayley, founder of Critical, an organisation to prompt critical thought about all things lived experience engagement in suicide prevention. Today's video is just the first in a series of videos to showcase the immense range of skills and abilities that people with lived experience bring to their work in suicide prevention. Often people with lived experience are just used as a story to contextualize suicide prevention work. But the truth is we're so much more than just the difficulties that we've overcome or that we still work to overcome. More than just storytellers brings you stories of when people combine their lived experience with their other skills and abilities. We are managers, change makers, advocates, family members, and in the case of today's storyteller, we're mentors and mindfulness masters. John Shearer's mantra is be mindful, pause, connect, and you'll hear in his video why this is such an important part of his practice in suicide prevention. I hope that you enjoy all that John has to offer and he inspires you to show that you are more than just a storyteller. People with lived experience of suicide always have a lot to offer, that's for sure. And quite often, if there's been a suicide in the family, for example, then, then people start searching and and, they, and and hopefully they find what they're searching for, you know, which is most probably answers. But sometimes, of course, they don't and they go downhill and, and it can actually lead to more suicide. And, and that's well documented. So lived experience of suicide is more than just sharing our stories. You know, that's for sure. So I think uh, I think a lot of times people, you know, start searching or or actually start finding their purpose, and then they contribute in all sorts of ways. I've seen some amazing transformations in people who have come to me for mentoring, for example, and I have no university degrees, uh, but. What I, I sort of teach people is things they don't get from the system. Uh, spirituality and culture is the big standout because you, you won't get that from the system. You won't get it from university trained people. There probably are some. I'm not going to put a blanket over everybody. But uh, even just recently uh, here in Harvey Bay, I was talking to a psychologist and, and she said she's not allowed. This is what she believes, but it's not really true, I'm sure. I hope not. She's not allowed to talk about spirituality. What? So many people have got their lives back, like me, and I'm certainly not the only one, because they have connected with themselves spiritually and culturally. Yeah. So it's it's more than just sharing our stories, Hayley, that's for sure. And I, I love what you're doing. That's fantastic. Well, it certainly comes from a place of lived experience of mental health issues, because I'll just briefly share my story. In 1982, I died in a, in a truck crash and was obviously revived. And I had substantial physical injuries and I needed operations and things. But later that year, I had what was diagnosed as psychosis and then got stuck in the mental health system for 15 years. And, and I didn't understand what was happening to me through that time. I spent time in mental health units. Um, you know, I was suicidal myself very depressed i also had times of mania where i felt all powerful you know uh, 15 years this went on and then in 1997 on what was to become world mental health day 10 10 10th of october in 1997 25 years ago now an old friend of mine who i hadn't seen since before my accident 
he was passing through town and he had what he called a spiritual prompt to come and knock on my door and catch up. And he shared his story with me. And that led to my spiritual awakening. And at that time, mental health professionals told me that what I had was incurable, that I'd have to take medication for the rest of my life, and that I'd never work again. And I believed them. And that kept me stuck. And do you know they're still telling people that today? I regularly, you know, people contact me after they've had their 10 or 20 free appointments with a psychologist and it hasn't made any difference. And, and that's most often when they, they find me and then, you know, then I'm able to mentor them and, and I've seen some amazing transformations in people when they sign up to my 52-week mentoring service. I only charge $12 a fortnight uh, over the 52 weeks because most often people aren't working like, like me because, you know, of, of them being stuck in the mental health system, basically, uh, it, it is a bit of a trap. Yeah, so uh, it comes from my lived experience. And then, you know, more recently, I lost a couple of people who are very close to me good friends to suicide and as a mental health professional because I do consider myself a mental health professional because of the 10,000 hours of study I've done into mindfulness in all cultures and it is in all cultures and it's such a simple and powerful practice uh, and, and it, uh, as when I develop my practice the reward for my practice was peace of mind and clarity of mind, things that I never had because all I had was a, was a, was a brain that was scrambled. I had a mind like a drunken monkey for all those 15 years especially. Yeah, so peace of mind and clarity of mind. And when you have those things, well, you're happy. You know, when you develop a mindful practice, happiness kind of follows you around because you're at peace no matter what's happening in the world it's amazing and but it's a spiritual practice no two ways about that and i can see clearly now looking back at my own experiences and they were spiritual experiences i, I just didn't understand what was going on and, and when people gain that perspective or understanding then they get their lives back that's what i live for yeah, and we can all make a difference. Uh, I often say it is always my hope that the people who are touched by my ripple then create a ripple of their own. That way we can change the world. We can, one person at a time. And and you're helping doing that too, Hattie, by just doing what you're doing, you know, getting people to share their stories or, or, or give, you know, give their two bobs worth, if you like. Yeah because it touches people it inspires people they go well you know maybe there is another way you know a more holistic way perhaps rather than medications and you know going down that road yeah so it's a it's a wonderful thing and uh, yeah there is more than sharing our stories i think sharing our stories is is, is one way that we're going to overcome stigma and we really do need to overcome that. You know, any time something, like in America, just for example, someone goes into a school and starts shooting people, what gets the blame? Mental illness every single time. Well, it kind of gives mental illness a bad rap. You know, what about if, if the media started reporting it as a spiritual illness or spiritual disorder puts a whole new perspective on it doesn't it yeah my wife and i um after my spiritual awakening in 1997 my wife and i opened a pool hall in the main street of wagga wagga we had 16 pool tables and a jukebox uh we did that for six years it was wonderful years and and then we decided to move north 
you know, for our health, really. And I thought, what was I going to do? And I know through my dark years, I call my 15 years, uh, there was time, I wasn't always unwell. There was time when I was well, but I really felt like there was some sort of calling on my life. And I actually did counselling courses and, and things like that. So I thought, well, when we decided to move in 2009, uh, what was I going to do? So I started searching the internet and what I found was a book by an Australian doctor, Dr. Russ Harris, called The Happiness Trap. And The Happiness Trap is about ACT therapy, A-C-T, it stands for Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, and it's a mindfulness-based therapy, like <clears throat> most modern therapies are, actually, uh, mindfulness-based now, which is fantastic. Well. I read the book and I decided that's what I wanted to do, teach people mindfulness because I fell in love with mindfulness. I got Dr. Russ Harris to train me as an ACT therapist and and then, then we moved. And I started my mindful practice. And even though my spiritual awakening was enough to get my life back and get me off meds in 1997, uh, I still had unhelpful and negative thoughts, like we all do. I still had an active inner critic, which we all do. And when I started my mindful practice, those things started to take a back seat. They didn't really show up anymore. And and that's when I was, an, uh, uh, that's what enabled me really to have peace of mind and clarity of mind. It's quite amazing. So a little bit about mindfulness, especially. Uh, you might see in my background, that's my logo, be mindful, pause, connect. And that's how I've simplified 10,000 hours of study into that. That's the practice. It is deceptively simple. A lot of people don't really understand what mindfulness is. They think it's yoga or meditation uh, they're things we make time to do, but mindfulness really takes over our life. It becomes who we are because we practice daily throughout our day. Be mindful, pause, connect. I might just share that because you don't, you know, whoever's listening could find this very, very beneficial. Be mindful is a key thought I teach people to use anytime they notice their mind being unhelpful or negative. Uh, but not only when we need it, but all the time, whatever we notice our mind doing, really. Be mindful is the instruction we use, and it comes from our heart. And it's our heart that's connected to the universe. It's our heart that's connected to our source, or whatever you believe your higher power to be. It's our heart. So we sort of put our heart in charge. So from the heart, we use the instruction, be mindful. We tell ourselves, be mindful. And then we allow that to trigger a pause. We pause our mind. Just for a few seconds, we pause. And in that pause, we connect. And we connect in three different ways. We connect with where we are. And it doesn't matter where we are. At work, at play, at home. doesn't matter. Anywhere. And we connect using our five senses. Sight, hearing, you know, smell, taste, touch, especially if we're with a partner. We connect with who we're with, with full presence. That means not thinking about what to say next or something clever to say or having any agenda. Just be present. It's the greatest gift we can give our loved ones, that's for sure. Just being present. I don't know how many times through my dark years my kids would say, Dad, have you been listening to me? because my mind is somewhere else, not not here, not present. So it's be mindful, pause, connect. Connect with where we are, connect with who we're with, and this is the important part, connecting with our source. Because when we do start creating a little bit of silence in our mind, then source has a chance to to drop things in our mind. We, we start receiving divine wisdom and intelligence, which is available to all of us. 
it doesn't have to be any sort of spiritual master or guru to to have have that available to us it's available to all of us how by silencing our mind because not picking on christians but christians and you know a lot of other religions do they pray 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 which is great there's not, nothing nothing wrong with that at all but a lot of times they don't pause their mind to be able to receive and when we start doing that it becomes a, a kind of conversation with God. There was a series of books written about that. Comes to mind. Mm. But anyhow, be mindful, pause, connect. That's the practice. Very simple. And you don't really see the benefits until you start practicing. And then you start to notice synchronicities. Your, your life becomes certainly more organized because the pause you know we might have 500 things to do and to be successful they say we need 500 things to do but what do we do first and we can only do one thing at a time and it's amazing because the highest priority thing will drop into our mind and and we should never let fear get in our way i believe one of the greatest fears in the world today is is the fear of what other people are thinking millions of people they have an idea they get on track with their lives and at, at a big an idea comes to them and, and but then they think oh what what would mum and dad think or what would my friends think and then they don't do it yeah so we can't let fear get in their way that's for sure and yeah, I just thought I'd mention that one. But be mindful, pause, connect, and keep doing it every day. I know 25 years ago, I, I, every morning, oh, well, it wasn't 25 years ago. It was in 2009, 13 years ago. Uh, every morning with mindfulness, I, I, would, I would say, what are we doing today, soul? S-O-L. It's a ancient roman word for the sun i see the sun as my source energy that's just me uh, it makes sense to me because uh, when you consider the sun as source energy for the whole planet and, and when you consider that we are all connected everything is connected then that's that's just me so every morning what are we doing today so then i pause my mind and receive you know it could be no, don't do anything today. Have a rest, because that's important too. Doing nothing is doing something. It's having a rest. Or it could be start an organisation, which I have, or write a book. I'm working on my third book now. It's it's just amazing. It's almost like your life. You 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 become, you're following that 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 source, that power, that energy, and you meet the right people. Things happen. It's just been an amazing journey and anybody can get on track with their journey too that's for sure i think oh, it's it's been a journey like it's 25 years now yeah 25 years since that spiritual awakening and that awakening was just the simple the new perspective I had on light and dark. Because uh, we, we all have light and dark. And it was something that I was never aware of prior to that. And, you know, I'd have an unhelpful or negative thought or, or whatever, or the inner critic was fired up, giving myself a hard time or any of those things but with my newfound perspective i would say oh, that's on the dark side i'm not going there i'm going to walk in the light i prefer to walk on the light so i'd shift my focus and then then the dark side would, would start taking a back seat so really that's what it is just keeping it very simple light and dark and we all have it and we've got to accept both because you don't have to look far to find proof of, of that either because 
like I mentioned earlier, take someone who goes into a school shooting people. Well, their mind is consumed by the dark. And, yeah. And then the other side of the coin is people like uh, uh, Teresa, Mother Teresa. Her, her mind was con was light, consumed by light. And look at all the amazing things she did. And she's not the only one, but she's come to mind. But, I mean, there's heaps of people who are showing their light. And uh, so so that's it. You know, it's like the yin and yang. And we've got to accept both, that's for sure. And and we have a, almost a choice of which which we follow or, or what, what we're going to shine. There's so many people out there now who are sharing their stories and I'll just encourage them to keep doing that. And do you know there's uh, there's real power in making ourselves vulnerable by sharing our stories, uh, our personal struggles or whatever. And there's a uh, YouTube video, which I'll mention, which is really worthwhile watching. It's by Brené Brown. And if you search Brené Brown vulnerability, it's millions and millions of people have watched it. It's a it's a uh, TED TED presentation that she did years ago, and and she talks about when we make ourselves vulnerable. And any time someone comes and has a session with me, it's always the first thing I do is exchange stories. You know, and most times I'll share my story. And, and when we do make ourselves vulnerable that way by sharing our story and opening up, then without fail, the other person opens up. And, and then you've got a, a real connection, a relationship. And and that's that's what's important. So I just encourage people to, to do that, you know. And it is. It's kind of like a power in a way, yeah, when we make ourselves vulnerable. So I think that's really important as well, especially for people with lived experience because our lived experience gives us power anyhow, you know, the power of our own experience. And it's always valid because it's our experience. So, you know, I would encourage that, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and realise that, that we have the power, yeah. not, not the system. The people do. They really do. I know sometimes we, we think that's not true, but it really is. Anyone is welcome, you know, to, to find me, contact me. I'm pretty easy to find. Just search for John Shearer. You'll find me easy enough. Or or search for Be Mindful, Pause, Connect. I've made my, that my thing for many years now. And if you, if you type that in, you'll find me, that's for sure. So if you've connected with what John has talked about today, please like, subscribe or comment below so we can continue the conversation. The only way we're going to improve the way that people with lived experience of suicide are engaged in suicide prevention activities is if we're talking about it. If you have a story that you want to share with the world, please get in touch with me and we can have a chat about how best to make that happen. Take care of yourselves and those around you and we'll see you next time.